All right, if we look at our unit modules through the whole class, we have just finished posting the last project that I will grade. And if we look at all these unit modules, introduction to digital art, compositing, vectors, uh, creature design, landscape composites, animation, vector design, type design, spot illustrations, digital coloring, digital painting, poster layout, finding artists and digital contemporary techniques that are interesting and presenting on them. All of that informs this last unit, which is the single uh, highest weighted unit for your grade of everything. This is worth 10 points, your final project. And it is not graded by me, it's graded by a full class critique, right? Based on its idea, its execution, its, uh, <laughs> what am I missing? Idea, execution, effort, and then if it has pizzazz or not, if it kind of stands out as a favorite for the, the class in the room. Now, this is what's missing from a lot of portfolios coming out of colleges, going into industry or going to applications to other programs, even grad school programs. It's what's called full concept work. So you'll see a lot of portfolios that show a lot of good techniques, like they've mastered charcoal, they've ma mastered acrylic, they've mastered colored pencil, They've mastered life drawing. They've mastered still life painting, on and on and on. But you'll see very few that actually show a full idea that's unique to that artist, right? And so in art, idea, the word that's used for it is concept, to conceive of something, something original, something your own. And then to have a full concept project means that every decision the artist makes in the image making is in service of the idea. So this isn't a digital painting project. This isn't a compositing project. This isn't a vector design project. This isn't word-based or multiple element layout on a poster project. It can be all of those things if they serve the idea <laughs> that you come up with. So that's what full concept means, and it's challenging. So instead of showing you how to do it, I'm gonna walk you through a process to hold you accountable to your ideas and to make your ideas better. And it's what's called the full concept process. So you can read about it here. There's a proving ground that will give you credit for doing those thumbnails, doing those critiques, and then your final project is gonna be graded by the class. But the more you take the, uh, the concept part, the idea part seriously, the better the final product is gonna be, and the better grade you'll get. It's good to reflect back on the class before doing this project, that's why we have the interim self-assessment due next class, just answering these five questions. Uh, realizing how much you've learned and where you can go with these skills and where you might want to put some of these skills together. So if there's any technique that you want to revisit, you want to use it on your final project. These are the steps we're going to learn. There's problem definition, which we're going to try to get done today. Then there is brainstorming. And that's going to include some thumbnail sketching, which you need to have by next class. And then there's going to be collecting info, gathering reference, which you'll do after you meet with me next class, and then making a refined sketch. And then there's the creation, because once you have a refined sketch, we're going to talk about it, and we're going to figure out what your workflow is, like what process will you use? Will you composite? Will you composite and then digitally paint on top? Will you sketch by hand, then scan it in, then do digital line art and then digitally color and then digitally paint on top of that? Will you composite in words? Where will you get your, your sources? What resolution do you want? What physical size do you want to print it? All of that's the creation process, right? And when you're doing that, you want to think of the presentation. How are you going to present it to the class? You're going to write a one-page artist statement that goes with it. And all of that ends with presenting your product on May 3rd at the beginning of class to the class critique. That's like our gallery opening. And your work needs to speak with you. The image and your one page, no more than a page, artist statement, might just be a short paragraph. That's what tells your audience everything you want them to know about your idea and how you executed it. The first thing that you all want is to define the problem. So basically, what are we being asked to do, right? In a project like this, you get to write that problem. And when I've made it completely open for students, they waste way too much time not knowing what they want to do. So what I'm doing is I'm not telling you what you're making art about. Instead, 
I'm serving as a curator that has a theme for the show. And you have to create something that fits in that theme. But it can be comedic, it can be serious, it can be political, it can be personal, it can be visceral, it can be cerebral, it can be any take you want on it. So how do we find out that theme? If you go to the home page, because you won't find it in the proving ground, because that's all just how you work with your ideas, and you go to assignments, this semester has a unique theme for assignment eight, and your unique theme is overthinking it, colon, art to overcome apathy. So there's a lot there. You can respond to any aspect of it. And remember, it's not to be graded by me, but by your fellow classmates, right? So having a unique interpretation of that is going to get them to score you higher for your idea. I have this linked out to a site called Dribble. Uh, Dribble's like Behance. It's very similar, a lot of professional work, but it's just been around for long enough now with tags that there's basically inspiration for anything. And so you can see different work that relates to overthinking in some way. But this might be a totally different way than you're thinking about it, right? There's lots of images of like heads exploding or thought clouds going crazy. And it can be a good way to acknowledge the cliches that are out there, right? Before you find your take on it. But we'll, we'll go through all of that. So don't worry too much about this link. But it's really just those words and how you want to define them and think about that. Overthinking it, art to overcome apathy. Because what happens when we overthink things? Yeah, you can get stressed out. What does the stress lead to? Not a whole lot of productivity, right? Like a whole lot of wasted energy, wasted effort, uh, or just being overly self-critical, <laughs> you know, making lots and lots of sketches, crumpling them up, throwing them away. So we want to actually make the art about some aspect of that. And we want this art that we make to kind of overcome this easier apathy and so you get to interpret it the way you want. This is a past student example that had a very different theme, right? But I could see how it could fit with this theme, <laughs> like overthinking it. Art to overcome apathy. So what do we have? And I'll, I'm going to use this student with their permission. This is Gerson's work. It's called Karen versus the Masks of Tyranny. This is their own personal project, their own personal view. And so you have this character that he calls Karen versus this mask of tyranny, this floating face mask. There's a Google search book in her arm, and then it's designed to look like a, an internet meme with this little subheading built into the image. Is this oppressing me? It's kind of whimsical, and it's digitally colored, and looks like an animation cell with some texture, some hand-painted trees. And this is kind of, if, if it's under the theme of overthinking it, I don't think anyone would have a problem with that, right? It kind of shows us how we can get wrapped up in our own heads, like doing Google searches, trying to figure something out. So really, I do hope that this is a very open theme for you to explore. Also, look at all of these examples. Some of these are past student examples. Some of these are very famous art historical examples, like Barbara Kruger. Some of these are professional examples. None of them had this theme, but they could relate. <laughs> right? So basically, this theme still allows you to do anything you want to do. It just should hopefully focus your attention and give you a concrete place to start reacting. So taking that as the theme, I'm actually going to copy and paste that. Maybe I've already done it. I'll make sure. But the first thing we need to do is the proving ground where we learn this concept process, and that's where we post our sketches, both thumbnail sketches and refined sketches, where you'll post your final art projects for class review. You're actually going to print them, but you'll also post them here. And so it restates the theme there and gives like the full assignment sheet. So we need to learn this right now. So if we go to that proving ground, the first problem you have is you want to write a one sentence statement summary. This will help clarify what you're trying to do. This is defining your problem or in creative fields, this is what's called your brief. And you get to write your own brief. So 
that's going to help focus all of your ideas. And we're going to actually write it with words on paper. So I'm going to pause this here and give you each a piece of paper. So our theme of overthinking it, art to overcome apathy, really can, can encompass anything you would want to do. But your one sentence summary is going to actually give you your marching orders. Like if there is a certain technique you definitely want to use, you put that into your summaries. Saying something like, using digital coloring, I want to create my own character that defeats apathy. Right? Um, or I want to create a weapon concept design using compositing and digital painting that very realistically shows a sword cutting through a brain. And you can even come up with little like title ideas sometimes called cut right to it. I don't know. So try these things out. Once you have a one sentence like summary of your idea, that is the problem that you're going to try to visually solve. It should already get you kind of excited for what you could make of it, right? So this was an example from Garrison. Uh, I will use the familiar imagery of memes and cancel culture to satirize our society's need to pol politicize every bleeping thing, no matter how obvious or important. What I like about that one is it already suggests some influences, like the meme internet culture. Uh, it also suggests kind of a, a tone. So is this really serious? Is this meant to frighten anyone? No, it's meant to satirize and kind of poke fun. And then he clearly cares about it, right? Using capitals, using swear notation, and using an exclamation point. So it'd be good if your idea is something you can care a lot about, whether it's personal, whether it's funny, whether it's political, whatever that might be. The next step is to acknowledge the easiest way <laughs> to get that idea across. And this is what I call acknowledging the cliche. And sometimes you can just do this with writing it down. So for this, it's like I could, whatever popular memes are now, I could use one of those and make a version of it that, that fits to this idea. And so that's basically what he did. He, he drew three thumbnails, just really quick preparatory sketches. They can be digital, they can be done by hand, but they all are relating to this same idea. So in each one, he reinterpreted a different meme. One is one where they put like masks and signs into art historical paintings. One is based on a, an old meme generator or a gene, uh, meme site called I Can Has Cheeseburger. And one is with what's called the butterfly meme that was around at the time he was doing this project. And so he came to the class, I want you to come to class with this statement and with these thumbnails. And then we sit together and we have our first process critique, one-on-one -on -one next class. They're not class critiques because I don't want you to give away your ideas or, you know, bias anyone before we have the gallery show. In that first process critique, I'm going to help you decide which approach you want to refine and then what research you need to do, inspiration you need to collect to inform that refined sketch. So this became his refined sketch, kind of combining things from different things he was interested in. And that refined sketch, then I, I work with you again at the end of next class, towards the end of next class, second half of next class, and we figure out your workflow. We figure out what techniques you're going to use, what the end size is going to be, if it's going to be printed, if it's going to be shown on screen, because this could also be animation. It can even have sound incorporated. And then you will be working on it to present it to the class with an artist statement. So his finished artist statement was this. And it just kind of explains his intention. And then he came up with his title. And then he printed it. And he put it up. And then students score it, right? Now for the proving ground, what you need is you need at least three rough thumbnail sketches. And you need to have an individual process critique with me. So if you're not here in class next on Wednesday to have that, we're going to need to do it in office hours or during Zoom or in a Zoom meeting in order to get that credit. And then it asks, 